Okay, how do we get the big muscles like Arnold, but avoid the acne while we do it? Oh boy, I think that was enough cringe for my entire life. Never gonna do that again, I'm sorry. But welcome to this video where we're gonna talk about how you can avoid having more acne when you get into fitness, whether that be lifting weights for bodybuilding or powerlifting or CrossFit, or it's getting into a new sport or just any sort of exercising like camping, hiking, anything. Because a lot of times what we'll see is those of us who are already predisposed to having acne is we'll see a huge increase in acne after we start exercising. And there's some things that we should all know that would really limit that. So stick around to the end because this video is gonna help you a ton, but first I'm gonna go to the gym and get my workout in and then I'll come back and we can talk about this. Okay, so back from the workout, it was a really, really good one. Now, let's get into this video. We're gonna cover two different sections. The first one is going to be the basics, the science that covers everything when it comes to exercise, nutrition, and acne. This is ubiquitous and is for everybody. But then on section two, everyone always asks me, what are some specific acne-friendly meals that I can have if I'm trying to get fit? And I'm gonna show you maybe six or seven or eight of them, okay? Okay, let's jump into the basic section. Now, the first thing I wanna say is that if you are predisposed to having acne, you've had acne your whole life, when you get into exercising, you're really just gonna try not to have more acne, but you're still going to have it. All the other factors that have caused acne in your life are still gonna be there and they're still gonna be causing you acne. So it's okay to have breakouts. We're really trying to avoid is having you double and triple the amount of acne you have, get new types of acne like cystic acne because of certain things that you shouldn't be using or taking or anything like that. Now, first off, I don't know if I even need to say this, but this whole video is based on people who are lifting and exercising naturally. If you're taking uh, testosterone or hormones, you are definitely gonna break out more and there's nothing you can do about it. It's just plain as that. So the second thing they wanna mention is that a lot of times when we get into a new exercise routine, we will hammer the protein, whether that be protein drinks, protein supplements, or just having more protein in our diets. This is a useful thing because you are gonna need more protein to build your muscles and repair them after workouts, but the problem is a lot of people will go crazy and will do five times as much protein as they've ever had in their life. And there's two things. One, if you are having dairy supplements, if you're having whey protein or casein protein, it's been proven that dairy increases the amount of oil production in everybody by increasing something in your body called mTOR, which we'll get into later. But also the more protein that you have, the more you're exposed to an amino acid called leucine. Leucine has also been proven in scientific studies to increase the amount of oil that you produce. So while you do want to have more protein to be able to recover faster, you want to just make sure that you're not overdoing it. In my opinion, I used to think I would need, you know, 400 grams, seriously, of protein per day. Now I average around 140 to 165 grams of protein and I weigh about 200 pounds and I'm really, really into bodybuilding. I lift really hard. So that number is really not that high, but that's what really works for me. Okay, so the next thing I wanna talk about are high levels of fat in your diet. Now, I know this video is for everybody, but this one kind of more focuses on people who are really skinny, who are trying to add weight. A lot of times, if it's really hard for you to gain weight, the easiest way to get calories in is to just have tons of fat, whether that be like olive oil in your mass gainer or just eating tons and tons and tons of peanut butter or whatever it is. Problem is, it's also been proven in scientific studies to increase the amount of oil production when you have a lot of fat. So of course, we do need fat to be healthy, especially our omegas, but when we have just you know exorbitant amounts of fat, it will increase the amount of oil production that you have, which will increase the amount of acne that you produce. Now, this kind of leads into the next thing, which is having high levels of calories increases the amount of oil production and acne. Now, this one, it's kind of hard to get around. Like if you are trying to gain muscle, if you're trying to gain weight, you're gonna need an excess of calories. You need a surplus to build those muscles. That's where this kind of sucks because we can only limit the amount of things that we're doing that cause acne, but there are some things that we just have to deal with. And really this just helps you to realize and expect that there are going to be a bit more breakouts than usual, because if you're trying to go from 130 pounds to 190 pounds, so you can be a better football player, you're gonna have more calories and you're gonna have more acne. Now, the next thing I wanna mention is people always ask, what is the macronutrient ratio that you suggest? That's actually, there's no science on this yet. So it's actually really hard. All we know are that high levels of protein, extreme extremely high levels fats, all those things increase your acne, but there's no 
preferred ratio of carbs to proteins to fats in your diet that is going to be the least, you know, acne causing. So my personal breakdown is somewhere around an 80, 20, 20. So that's 80% carbs, 20% fats, 20% protein. This gives me enough protein that I can grow my muscles and repair them. This gives me enough fats that I am still in that correct range where I'm getting enough omega threes to be healthy every single day. And then because I am gaining weight, because I do have such extremely hard workouts, carbs really help me to refill my glycogen. They really help me to have more intense workouts. For me, that's what works. But again, this is just me and you can kind of adjust those things so that you can have a ratio Ratio that works better for you. Okay, only a few more things in this section and then we'll move on to the meals, but all this stuff is really important. So I do want to get it all across to you. High levels of sugar has also been proven to increase oil production and acne. So if you are bulking and it really helps you to have tons of pop tarts or sugary cereal or whatever, just because it's easier to eat, unfortunately, that is going to cause more acne. Now, this next thing is actually really important and it's really been helpful for me is that when you are cooking food and you are looking at your diet, you should increase the amount of vegetables that you're having every single day. There's a few reasons reasons that this is helpful, but one, it really helps improve your gut health by providing prebiotic fibers. So these are fibers that your gut, your bacteria, the good bacteria in your gut is going to feed off of. So this is basically food for the good bacteria in your gut, which we'll get more into in a second. But another thing that eating actual vegetables does that, you know, supplementing vitamins can't do for you is vegetables have polyphenols and phytonutrients in them. And those are also really good for improving your overall immune function and also your organ health. And when your organs are healthier, a lot of times it helps you filter out toxins out of your body. And a lot of times toxins are the reason that we break out. Now, like I said, gut health is super important. So having a probiotic can be really helpful, whether that be a probiotic, you know, pill or supplement or probiotics from foods that are fermented. So this could be like kimchi or sauerkraut or miso. There's a lot of different things that provide that. But basically probiotics are good bacteria that are being introduced into your gut. And it's really important to not have something called dysbiosis, which is having more bad bacteria in your gut than good bacteria, because that can lead to another problem called leaky gut syndrome. And that is something that I suffer from a long time ago that really caused me a lot of acne. So while we don't really know that much about the gut when we are getting into fitness, just be kind to it by having a good amount of vegetables every single day. And also sometimes throw a couple probiotics into your food, like some sauerkraut on your stir fry. All right, let's briefly talk supplements. There's so many of them. And when it comes to supplements, everyone is always kind of like, does this cause acne? Does that cause acne? And it's really hard to cover them all. But you know, one of the most common ones is creatine. And even when I looked into that I have a video on it. I had conflicting views. One study said that there was no problem at all. Another article showed that there may be links to increasing IGF-1, which then increases acne. So it is really tough that most supplements don't have a lot of scientific you know, studies behind whether or not they cause acne. But I will say this, I would err on the side of having as little supplements as possible, right? Like if you feel like you really need something like a pre-workout or something like that, hey, work with it. See if it causes you more acne. If it does, see if you can take it out because you know, if you don't need it, then get it out of there. But I wouldn't go to the, you know, GNC around you and just get every single supplement that you possibly could, because really I've been lifting for a long time. They don't really help that much. They don't really give you that much of an edge on the competition. Uh, and, and you're really just taxing your kidneys and your liver more, which again, when those bad boys are not working at hundred percent optimal, you know, workload, then a lot of times you're gonna have more acne. Okay, so the final thing in here, I just wanna leave you with a rule of thumb that a general good way to look at your meals is to think of having some sort of grain, especially a whole wheat grain. So instead of having white rice, have brown rice or have quinoa or something like that, having a protein source and then always thinking of having a vegetable with that meal. That's a good way to kind of come up with a basic meal. And again, a good rule of thumb. Instead of just eating, for example, you know, a giant plate of rice with nothing else, you can have a plate of rice with some beans and a couple of veggies on the side. It's going to balance it all. It's going to bring down the GI, the glycemic index of the meal, and it's going to just in general provide you with most of the things we've talked about in this section. Whew. Okay, that was a mouthful. A lot to cover, but again, I want to give you as much information as possible because this isn't just a quick fix. This is not just one little thing you have to think about. There's a lot that goes into this, and I want you guys to really have a good mindset when it comes to exercising and trying to keep your acne minimal. Now, let's talk about some suggested meals, some things that I eat as somebody who bodybuilds and tries to gain muscle and also deals with acne. As you can see, I have a couple pimples here, but I'm trying to keep it minimal. So these first five, I think are extremely acne friendly. The last three are just 
eh, mostly acne friendly, but they're things that I eat commonly. So the first one is a brown rice vegetable stir fry. So this consists of brown rice, a protein of your choice. So I'll use something like tempeh or I'll use tofu or I'll use beans. That's where I get my protein from. And then some vegetables and I'll cook all of this in soy sauce. This is a really, really good meal because it's got a ton of whole grains. It's got a good amount of protein, got some vegetables, which adds fiber, which slows down the digestion of the meal. And then also it's cooked in soy sauce, which is just sodium based instead of being cooked in like butter or some sort of fatty or sauce. Number two, I love soups and stews. And so the one that I've been making a lot lately is a lentil soup. This literally contains basically like tomatoes, lentils, potatoes, a decent amount of vegetables, some broth and a bunch of spices. And it sounds kind of basic, but it's actually really, really good. And again, we're getting a good broad coverage of all those things that we're trying to get. Okay, third up is oatmeal. Oatmeal is actually really awesome and it's super basic. You can make it for breakfast. Sometimes I'll even have it for dinner, but literally it's just oats. You do water or a little bit of some, some plant-based milk is what I'll do. Uh, and then I'll add some like protein, a scoop of protein in there. And it's so simple. I'm literally just microwaving it and then it's done. And it's giving me slow digesting carbs as well as covering some protein. And it's relatively low in fats. Okay, fourth up, I love this burritos. Burritos are so good. You can put black beans, refried beans, and then your protein, whether it be tempeh or tofu or whatever else. And then just add some avocado and some salsa, maybe some lettuce, uh, maybe some hot sauce in there. Really, really good. Um, and again, you shouldn't, you know, demonize fats. Avocado is in there. Fats are important to have, so don't avoid them completely. I'm just showing you mostly low fat things and you can add a little bit of fat here and there. And that's how I get to my 20% ratio. But again, this is all just me. You don't have to follow what I'm saying. Now, number five, this might surprise you, but fruit smoothies. It's a really good way to get a ton of calories in. And if you add a scoop of protein, you're getting your protein in. You can add some hemp hearts to add a little bit of fat in there, some cacao nibs to add a little bit of crunch and fat in there. Um, and it's a really, really basic, but good thing to have if you're trying to gain calories because liquid calories go down really easily. Um, but you might think, don't fruits have a ton of sugar and doesn't sugar cause acne? The fruits that are, the sugars that are in fruits are different than just like table sugar that's in like a Snickers bar or something like that. Uh, it's fructose and it actually breaks down in a different way that for me does not cause acne. And so far the science shows that it does not increase your oil production in the same way that sugar increases oil production. So number six is pasta. This is a super basic one. So I'll use whole grain pasta because it digests slower, it has more fiber in it. And then I'll also mix in a little bit of some chickpea pasta like bonza, and that just adds protein to the whole thing. And with the tomato sauce, you are getting a bit more sugar in there. So this is why it's kind of at the end of the list. I wouldn't say that this is like maybe the most acne friendly thing, but it's definitely more acne friendly than, I don't know, like pizza or something like that. Okay, number seven on my list here is scrambled tofu with some potatoes and some veggies on the side. It's a super basic meal, it gives you some protein, gives you some carbs. If you cook anything in a little bit of oil, or if you add some avocado on the side, you're getting a little bit of fats. It's just a super basic meal. Again, nothing is really perfect on this list. This is kind of just like my go-tos that are mostly acne friendly. And so I'm hoping it can kind of just get you going, get you some inspiration so that you can kind of figure out your meal plan and your meals that you can go to that are pretty acne friendly as well. Okay, so a bit of a longer video, a lot of talking here, but I did want to cover a ton of stuff. So I hope this was helpful for you. Remember that you are different than everyone else. So sometimes you got to try and see if, you know, caffeine causes you more breakouts. If it does, then taper back on it. You got to try different meals. And if something specifically breaks you out, maybe it's soy or, or, or whatever it is, you can taper back on it. So you really have to keep an eye on things that are differing and changing in your routine that you're noticing more breakouts from. That is a huge, huge important thing that a lot of people just completely forget because they want someone to just tell them exactly what to do. And everyone's different. Okay, so if you stuck around this far, I appreciate you guys. Give the video a big old thumbs up. If you want to check out my acne program that can really help you hone in and figure out your personalized plan that's going to treat you the best and keep you acne free the best, you can check that out. It's the acne method. It's only 10 bucks. It's 10 steps. Hopefully it'll help you out a lot. It's helped a lot of other people. And if you want to check out my favorite skincare brand in the entire world, check out Vanish. You can use my code Brian5 to get you $5 off an order of $50 or more. I'll put the link to both of those in the description below. I appreciate you guys coming in here. Remember, you are not alone. You are beautiful and you're part of Team Acne. I'll see you guys in the very next video.